Hi. When working with development boards such as this one, uh, you need jumper cables and either with pins or sockets, 0.1 inch header pins or sockets, uh, to work with these. And you can buy them ready made, such as these ones. And I do tend to use these quite a lot, uh, you know, just for test purposes when developing something. And the uh, the only problem with these is that sometimes you don't actually want these on both ends or you don't want sockets and pins. You might want a, a different type of connector. So I'll, I'll buy these and just chop these in half and put whatever connector I need on the other end. So this works fine, but sometimes you do want to actually build your own like custom connections while doing some prototyping. And you can buy them like this on like metal strips, uh, either pins or sockets. So I'll buy them and I'll just chop them up and put them in containers. So I've got sockets. So that's a good generic socket, basically. Similarly with pins, this one seems to be okay. Uh, it's reasonably low cost. So I've just chopped them up. I've taken them off the this, this, the metal reel. Just bent them off and put them in here. Anyway, so once you have that, you'll need to use a tool to do the do the crimping. And uh, I've got a selection of about three different ones here which I can try out. Um, so first thing is to get your wire. I've got some general wire here. This is um, the, kind of the same thickness as typical jumper jumper cable wires you can see here there's not that much difference in them okay <clears throat> so first things first is to strip that so, one, two, three, four. a little bit hard to get all of this on camera but you can see what I'm doing there I've discussed this tool this wire stripper in a different video actually, I really like it, it's great. Okay. The first tool is this one. Uh, it's okay, um, I, it's not my favorite tool, uh, not for these types of connectors anyway. Uh, this tool is actually very useful for JST connectors like JST PH and smaller ones. Uh, PH are the type that you see on boards for battery connections, so that's like a JST PH connector. And here as well so there you go uh, so these are actually smaller than 0.1 inch uh, connectors see there and uh, so these need a you know fairly fine small tool to do that and this tool is great well it's okay for that uh, for these it's I don't, I don't think it's particularly useful because this tool is quite thin and can only crimp the wire and then you have to do the insulation second uh, so you have to find the right location on the tool I think it's about 1.6 for for 0.1 inch headers uh, I could be wrong on that I've not used this tool in a while anyway um, so you can see here that the crimp if I get that in focus you can see here that the crimp's got two locations so this one here has to this one here has to um, crimp the actual wire itself the, the bare uninsulated wire and the insulation gets gripped here so the first thing to do is to pick your location in here. There. And then get the wire. And it's quite easy with this tool to know how far to push the wire because that insulation is going to hit the, the actual tool itself and you can kind of feel that when you do that. quite hard to do this in front of the camera but yeah I think I got it there the right place and then I just crush that and it's not really easy to tell how much to crush this you just kind of go by feel I think and this is another problem it, yeah this sticks in the tool Get that out. okay so that's the wire portion of it crimped now I've got to do the insulation and you can use the end here if you want to to kind of flatten this if it's if it's not quite right and I'm gonna go for 1.9 I'm not sure but I'll just try it anyway so you see that 
and I'm not going to crash so hard this time because I don't want to pierce the insulation too much. And that's the end result. I hope that's in focus. And we can test this. So if I grab some pliers. And just try and pull that apart. Oh, okay, so I didn't crimp that as hard as I should have, um, but it's fine. I, I mean, with you just got to get into the swing of using the tool, and once you're kind of used to it, you, you know how much force to use, and, and then that probably wouldn't happen. Okay. The next tool is one of my favorites, it's this one, it's the model number HT 225D. And this is a thicker tool, so it will do the insulation and the, uh, the, the wire crimp portion together. I've just labelled it insulation so I know which which end of the tool to use to feed the, the wire in. So the insulation side of the wire goes in this way and the crimp faces that side. So I can just quickly pick up the tool and know which side is which. Alright. Um, I'm going to just cut this off so that I'm working on a fresh piece. Strip it again. One, two, three. Okay. You can see I've got it there. Okay. <clears throat> and this is ratchet action, so it without any force applied, it will it will so remain in the correct position, yeah, cr um, closed until you finish crimping and then it'll release itself like that. Okay. So the general idea is you just uh, you use a ratchet to, for about three clicks and now it's being held there. And I'm not using any force now to hold that. That's in position. Okay. Um, to feed the wire in, uh, it's, there's no depth stop, so you don't really know where to, how far to push this in. Uh, but the trick I, I use is, assuming this has been stripped to the correct length, the wire, then I just feed the wire in and I look to see like a glint of the, the bare wire visible on the other side. As soon as I can see that, I know that it's in the right position and then I can crimp it. Um, so I don't know if I can do this on camera. I'm going to have to just look. Move it away, just have a look for it. Okay. And then, just crimp. So I, I, you just crimp this all the way to the end of the tool. And then as soon as you release that, so you can see it has bent it slightly. Um, but it's quite a shallow curve, so I don't think that's actually damaged the the crimp. And it's done the insulation there and the wire at the same time. So, you know, just by using your hand, you can straighten that if you want to. And to dress this, to cover this, you can buy these kind of plastic covers. Uh, I don't actually like using these too much. I just prefer just getting hold of bits of heat shrink and just putting them on top. Like that. And then obviously use a hot air tool on that and I, I think that just gives a neater result. It just depends on taste I guess. Anyway. It's going to be a bit hard to get off now. Sorry, excuse me while I cut this off. Okay. So we should test this um, crimp strength as well. Yeah, doing the same thing again. If I grab that. I 
can't actually. Ah. So it snapped. <coughs> Excuse me. It snapped uh, eventually, but the actual wire is still crimped in there. I'm just about to see that. So I think that was a pretty reasonable crimp. Um, okay, I've got one more tool to, tool to try. That's this one, which looks really strange, you know. Uh, I, I got this from eBay, it used for about £15, which is $20. And th this is a tool made by AMP, it's for their specific crimps, uh, but I'm just using any old crimp that I can find, so I'm not actually using the tool correctly, I'm, I'm misusing it. Also, for the, the cost of the tool, the tool was actually damaged, although the eBay advert didn't mention that. You can see here that this metal piece here, point out something. Yeah, this, this piece here, um, that ought to be flush, but it's kind of at an angle. You can see that it's just popping out. I can't fix that, uh, but it doesn't seem to have affected the, the actual crimp um, quality that it, it manages. The way to use this tool is, you can see here, there's a there's this lever thing and you can use that to independently set the insulation thickness separate from the wire crimp thickness so that controls the insulation thickness and I, the wire i'm using i would probably go for medium or thick and that and the wire crimp is controlled by which um, slot you put the crimp in so the top one's for uh you know slightly thicker wire than the bottom one the way this tool works is it's quite clever. You can see in here, uh, hopefully you can see, there's a kind of bronze piece. Let me point to it. There, bronze coloured piece inside the tool. Um, that actually acts like a bridge between the two parts of the crimp. So one part of the crimp, the, the, the portion which is going to hold, hold the wire, um, that has to sit on one side of that bridge and the uh, part that's actually going to get crimped with the wire uh, sits on the other side. So if I grab an unused crimp, okay. Yeah. And I know from, from experience using that wire that I, sh I ought to be going for the, the top setting here yeah, because it's a slightly thicker wire. And I don't actually really have to look at this much. I can go by feel. Um, I just kind of put that there and I can now feel that that bridge, sorry, try and get that clearer. You can see here, I move that there so that the, the crimp is in the right position and then just bring that there. And I can now just hold the tool with one hand that's, that's held in the correct position. Okay, <clears throat> I forgot to crimp the wire, um, strip the wire, so I'll do that. Just put that to one side. All right, here's a piece of wire. get that tool again and feeding the wire is straightforward as well because that the the insulation on the wire will hit against that bridge so I know when I've got to the right depth and it, it can't actually go any further so I just put that in okay and that's at the right place now I know that because I can feel the, feel the wires hitting that that bridge and one other thing I forgot to mention is this tool is really light to uh, it's got light action so I can just crush this with one hand so it was, it's quite easy to use this because if you find you don't have enough hands then you can just press this against a table or against your arm to carry on you know continuing crimp, crimp action so with one hand I've managed to crimp that fully and I release that <sighs> And with this tool, it's not actually bent the, the crimp. So this is pretty good. Okay, I'm trying to break the wire. Again. Okay. 
Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, the wire's actually broken, but the crimp is still intact. So you can see, even though that looks like uh, the wire came out of the crimp, it didn't actually. Um, that's just insulation that's been stretched. And I can still see there the, the copper wire. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. Just to make that clearer, I'm going to try bending this insulation portion back. And there. So it's still in there. So that's a pretty fantastic tool as well. Uh, but really there's hardly anything in it between, I mean for, for development purposes if you're prototyping something. I don't think there's much in it between this tool uh, and this one. But I mean if you can find this on eBay for very low cost then I think it's worth getting but otherwise this HT225D is pretty good. Thanks for watching.